he must be rolling the camera because it's like that was pretty good i must have i must have been i totally blurred the line between on and off i it's basically gone now in in most interactions in my life being on and being off there's no difference anymore so everything is a performance well, I've gotten accustomed to being real-time aware of FE considerations occasionally, intermittently, like for a stretch, like right now. But what that does is way more slowly than I use TI, but it does the same thing that TI does, which is it does render conclusions for me that become reference points but instead of me using those reference points to draw other conclusions they actually modify my behavior because I see FE I, I'm much more fluid fluent in the um, the real time uh, in the real time process orientation application of it than I display usually because I, it's, it's a secondary process, whereas it's the absolute value. Uh, this is, it's my value criterion. It, it, it's a thing. This theory is coming together because of the way that frameworks work in debate. In the Lincoln-Douglas debate, each debater presents a value, which is this is why we're this is what the good is basically. Um, like, <clears throat> I value life. I value liberty. I value autonomy. Something like that. And then you have a value criterion, which is, and we should use this process to uphold that value. It's the best process to uphold that value. So, for example, if I were to value liberty, my value criterion might be uh, gov constraint of government. That would be a practical way to uphold the value of liberty. The identity works the same way. So, my core value, I value potentiality. And my value criterion is consistency. And the reason is because if since your meta frame, your dominant function, means that you are you can't have a value higher than the one you value with your with your meta frame. So for me, my value is technically the metaphysical aspect of extroverted intuition. That's my core value. It own it has its own value criterion. Um, it's instrumental value, and that would be the physical aspect of extroverted intuition, namely playing with shit in the world. And then my, but but so that's that's sort of like the meta frame. It's got its own value value criterion, but it it comprises an object that functions as a value for then my real value criterion in terms of dealing with people, which namely is TI. Uh, that's how the value criterion means how we how we exercise legitimacy in the moment. So in the moment, I exercise legitimacy by either affirming it through consistency, falsifying it through inconsistency, or legitimizing through consistency, delegitimizing through inconsistency. Um, but then we go back to frame again in the third function. In the third function, the frame comes into play. So it gets checked against the subframe, which is potentiality is the the meta frame, but it, potentiality itself is is not. It gives you no concrete direction or on, ontological labels or tags or anchors or anything. It's got to manifest through uh, some sort of currency. And so, for me, the third slot then provides the currency frame. It says we'll know potentiality. The the grand potentiality quest is healthy provided uh, everybody likes me so uh, it's it's the frame that you use the meta frame you don't use it's a it's an absolute value that's invisible to you it's it's like saying you know it's a, it's the kind of frame we can't operate on we could operate on a physical frame for example by saying let's talk let's pretend we're we're talking about roads and cars we could go and alter the, the roads I could go and blow up a road and thereby work directly on that frame of reference, namely the system of roads that provides transportation channels or avenues for people to move along. 
I can I can attack that frame directly. Or I can address that frame directly. I can change that frame directly. It's subject to working upon directly. Well, that's true for your your third slot function frame as well. You can work on understanding and how you process and what you do with the the frame of everybody liking you, but it still has to be it's still only meaningful insofar as it's at least consistent with and upholds the ultimate meta frame, namely potentialities. In other words, it's not okay for everyone to like me if it means I have to promise to never do X again. Fuck that noise. We'll find another way to get everybody to like me than me agreeing to be constrained like that. It doesn't matter if if it's consistent with my hidden agenda subframe, it's not consistent with my meta frame's absolute value, and thus it won't it'll be manifest in some other way. So that's how the absolute value of the meta frame works is that it compels the other frames and processes to change when they run afoul of it. It's the ultimate, it's the ultimate law of non-contradiction. Within the, is the ultimate ontological law of non-contradiction. The ontological law of non-contradiction is this: every other frame of reference you have, to the extent that it negates your absolute value of your meta frame, will alter itself to become consistent with the meta frame. It won't lose to the meta frame. It will be subsumed by the meta frame. So that's why um, I can always prioritize everybody liking me, and it never runs out of my meta frame because when it does, I don't want to be liked that way, and I got to come up with a different way to be liked. And it, but it's still consistent with FE. So that's more on the frames and processes, the absolute and instrumental values, and the metaphysical and physical aspects of each cognitive function and the more I talk this out the more convinced I am that I'm right that's a good sign any thoughts or it's seven minutes seven minutes of pure golden bricks you can choose to polish a golden brick and hand it back to me you could Say, no, your golden brick is pewter. Or you could say, hey, let's use it to build this little brick statue over here. Or you could say, fuck you, I'm tired of gold bricks. Give me something else, god damn it. I can say that gold brick anymore. reminded me of a shiny thing, and then I went over there and I was like finding other gold bricks that were totally unrelated, and then I forgot to be listening. And I'm like, hey, Audra, Audra, you're supposed to be watching me. I'm doing cool stuff over here. No, I don't care about your cool stuff. You're supposed to be paying attention to my cool stuff. After you're done applauding, I'll go over there and look for a little while and see if you're doing another thing that's cool, okay? Gah! You're so rude, Audra. I know. I'm at, my buckets are dry. I didn't fill them up this morning. <laughs> it's like and the observers see us appear to be throwing water at each other. And Audra and I are like, oh, oh yeah, oh that's, oh that's right. They forget that there's not actually water. Isn't that actually water? They're bad. We're just practicing. Yeah. Like you throw the bucket like this, and we're like, yeah, yeah. I've seen the bucket be thrown like that. Yeah. I've seen the water fly that direction. I have deduced from negative space where the water must be and what it must cause you to do. <laughs> I've, I've learned to go, ooh, I'm wet. Is that Minecraft? Yeah. It is? Mm -hmm. I've heard people, I've, I've heard a lot about this game. And I've heard it's boxy. Pixelatedly square boxy. And I've also heard mm -hmm. that one thing that people do in this game is that they spend, they, they spend all their time making it more difficult for somebody else to do anything. They're, they're the INTP yeah. in your TEFE -E pudding. If you're trying to make a TEFE -E pudding, then you don't want an INTP around. Let's think how we can more efficiently prioritize everyone being cool with a compromise over that which is logically consistent or even effective to 
larger NI truths. Let's do that. Susie, can you help us do that, please? No. Yeah. See, you know, that this is the problem that the bad guys have in general. Remember, the bad guys are, for, for all the viewers out there, if you forget, here's a quick heuristic. The bad guys are people who are different from you. Okay? So anyway, the bad guys, they have a problem. They want to do bad things. We know they're bad things because they don't withstand our scrutiny. So the problem is, to do bad things well, they need to be scrutinized. Because otherwise, they will not anticipate problems very well. But the people who can best scrutinize bad ideas don't want to help people implement their bad ideas because their scrutiny reveals that they're bad ideas. So people who consistently present bad ideas have a habit, they learn it, of avoiding the scrutiny of smart people who use TI to invalidate their bad idea. And thus it is that they will forever clumsily fight the war to execute their own bad ideas because they have to avoid anybody who might show them how to less clumsily implement those bad ideas because to know that is to know that the ideas are themselves terrible. Are you recording? Um... Yep. I, I left that silence for my NI friends out there to have a chance to process that data. Let your, let your. Dude, I stopped listening to you like twenty minutes ago. I, I'm not talking to you live people in the room. I'm talking to my loyal viewing audience who watches every minute of every video. That's okay? not a thing. You participants, you aren't my favorite viewers. Okay, you know who's my favorite viewer? Viewer watching this video out there, it's you. You're my favorite viewer. I'm talking to you personally. Oh. I know, I know. Other people might think it too, but I'm really talking to you. And I want you to know something else. I love you. I do. I absolutely love you. I find you darling, quaint, rustic, and shabby chic all combined into one very, very desirable accoutrement for your home, garden, or anywhere where you want to sprish uh, up that, that, that chic okay it's all for you um audra would you like to also add how much you care about the viewer she is caring so much that she has lost the ability to speak that's what that's what the wetness does sometimes if you're underwater you can't be heard to scream for those of us who know what it means to feel well, we relate to that statement right there. The tertiary function should be renamed to abusive function. The abusive function? Well, listen. My concern is that we are cautious that nobody drowns. My favorite saying is, don't be mad at me when I can't breathe because I'm underwater. I can't help it! I can't help it! And your judgment is not helping! You hurt my feelings. I'm concerned about that phenomenon because people literally die from moisture. That's my, my moisture. Mm-hmm. That's why I've begun the Society for the Vaccination and Prevention of Moisture-Related Accidents. Hi, Audra. The internet couldn't handle the bandwidth of all the moisture that I was slaying. <laughs> moisture is bandwidth-intensive. It's true. We were just mentioning that it might be a good idea to start a 
an organization to, that's dedicated to the prevention of moisture related accidents. We go everywhere with towels. You're fine. That's our motto. You're fine. Quit whining. <laughs> the towel squad. <laughs> That's a towel. That dries you up. What do you mean it makes you more wet? No, it doesn't. You're lying. Shut up. You're fine. Altruistic absorbent. You know? That's our motto. What is? You cut out. Altru altruistic absorbance. Altruistic absorbance, yes. No, I'm not being mean to you. I'm altruistically absorbing your moisture. God, you're stupid. What do you mean, mean? I, you keep using this word. It makes no sense to me. I'm absorbing your moisture. Who's it? European Hi. men. Hi, Janelle. I've determined that European men are more susceptible to moisture than European women. Why? Because Jacob. It's all the because, soy milk. because Jacob's moist as fuck, and the chicks from Europe aren't nearly that moist. That's why I conclude. I general. I've made a hasty generalization. You have quite the representative selection. Well, I, I'm a big fan of hasty generalizations because they let you to get on with the metaphysical action as though it were the case, and you can always go back and degeneralize later if you want to. Don't call my generalization hasty until you Here's check it. to see if it's tasty. That's my motto. Don't don't call it hasty. Unless you've checked to see it tasty. Because those generalizations taste good. And salty. They're covered in salty moisture. I've got to go do shit. Thank you for being here, everybody. Thank you for watching this again. Video after video. Masterpiece Please. after masterpiece. Yep. It's such a masterpiece. Yeah.